The Battle of Winterfell is over. We're left with the fallout of the Night King's invasion. The revelation that Jon Snow is actually Aegon Targaryen. Cersei's iron grip upon the Iron Throne, Daenerys' iron will to take it, and my iron hard boner for this rock solid episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Movie Pop. I'm here with my sexy and fabulous co-host, Mr. Lawrence Hammer. Still triggered by that boner. I'm so sorry you guys had to see that. Hi guys, I'm Lawrence. <laughs> demonetized. <laughs> Instant demonetized. <laughs> well, hey, it's all right. All boners are welcome here, money or not. We're going to talk about this fantastic episode because that last episode was absolute shite. So, let's start it off with the beginning uh, of this episode. Uh, it was fantastic. Everyone was happy, everyone was holding hands, you know, cheering, just joyous about the battle that they just won, and um, no tears were in sight. Talking oh, about wait. Game of Thrones? What the <laughs> hell am I talking about? No! This was, this was dire, this was somber, yeah. this was sad. Uh, we have just the funerals happening, we're seeing the, the dead bodies of Jorah Mormont, um, Sansa putting a Stark sigil on um, Reek. And yeah. just yeah, just dealing with the aftermath of that disgusting final battle of the last episode. All those moments I found really kind of sh- really short but heartfelt. Like you, yeah. you really because these are char- these are long standing characters, right. and you're sad to see a lot of them go. Um, and I like how they show every character that died. It's like here's a rundown. It, it was it was it was great. I liked it. it yeah. Very good. Very, very good part of the episode. Very, it was a great opener. Very poignant. <laughs> yeah. Very very well to the point. Um, yeah, so let's move on into then following this scene was the the halls of Winterfell where they have the the dinner. It was it was great. It was very reminiscent of episode two where you kind of get all this nice drama uh, between characters. I mean, it's not really drama, but I think there's a lot of um, progression with the characters that can that can lead to some tension. Yeah. Uh, you see Jon Snow being reveled as a hero, and they yeah. kind of discuss him. And you see Daenerys; she goes from a um, from a smile to kind of a Kind of like she's a little upset after yeah. a little bit. She's getting a little, um, little jealous. Of, a little, yeah. She, of them you reveling can tell. in their war stories. Hey, right. John, he's a man. He's going to cock. Yeah. King of the yeah. North, king of the Seven Kingdoms. She doesn't like it because she knows where this is going and she knows his claim, you know, even though he hasn't really revealed it. Um, yeah, so it, you can tell there's there's some there's some foreshadowing for some discomfort to come. Yeah. Um, can I ask there's you a also, question real quick? Sure, sure. Yeah. Do you have a sense that the... There was a palpable sense of just tension boiling underneath that whole scene where it's contrasted with Daenerys kind of isolated from the groups of northerners celebrating, you know, praising Jon and that whole underlying tension. Did you feel that? Tension? Like I felt tension or like did felt tension off for Daenerys? Yeah. I mean, did you feel it vicariously through her? Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Because she's definitely... I like the way you put it. She's isolated. She's by herself in the corner. She has no one in her corner anymore. Yeah. Um, I mean, at this point in the episode, um, she has what well, maybe you know Missandei, and that's about it. I don't know who else she has. Uh, maybe her her unsullied and 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 her dragons. But right. yeah, I mean, in the room, she's by herself. There's nobody there. So just yeah. her and her Starbucks cup. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Removed. Um, no, yeah. So, and then also, I want to talk about the. Um, I love the scene with um, uh, Jamie Lannister, Tyrion, and uh, um, Brienne. Yeah. That was and and her her her. Um, I don't remember his name. Uh, the, his her squire. Oh yeah, Podrick. Oh, Podrick, right? Penis Podrick. Podrick. Yeah, that was that was a great scene. I love hearing them talk about it. And she's actually drinking, you know. And he's like, "Come on, you got to drink. Like, if you're not drinking now, when when are you gonna drink?" And right. yeah, and that leads to their their you know their little scene later. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I feel like there's a lot of characters that interact here. I also really love the um, the scene with uh, Sansa and the Hound. Oh yeah. Where she's like, if I hadn't experienced these things, um, I wouldn't be the person I am today. You know. Right. It, it was great. I just loved. I loved all those things. They were just great. Can and something that just came to mind. I'm sorry to interrupt because yeah. I read no an problem. article actually that just came out today that Jessica mm-hmm. Chastain, the actress, mm-hmm. had denounced the writers of Game of Thrones for uh, in, in giving uh, Sansa or the character of Sansa being embodied by the fact that she was brutalized and raped and mm-hmm. came to her own through those traumatic experiences, and yeah, throwing the writers to the flames for you know quote-unquote, empowering a woman 
through trauma. And I think that's just complete, like, me too woke nonsense. Like, yeah, that's not, I don't agree with that. Yeah, that's not the, object. like, I think this, this show, you need to take it with a dose of realism. It's designed to be a real show. And these are real things that happen to real people. Right. And this is how people develop in the real world. Yeah. I feel like Sansa is could yeah. be easily based on a character in the real world. Exactly. She's very believable. I think that's bullshit. It's not like know? every single female <clears throat> lead in the show was raped and like yeah. abused. Exactly. Everyone has their own story. They're all unique right. characters. There's no. There's no. You know. That's yeah. just how Game of Thrones is. Just wanted to touch on that briefly. Yeah. No. I think that was a great point. Um. Yeah. So let's 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 move on to the next to the next scene. Cool. Um. This is the the scene with uh in the war room and Daenerys and John. Um, wow. Wow. So th- we have the war room. We have the, 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 the council of the war room, which is, of course, mm-hmm. the main characters in the show. And, you know, naturally, Daenerys is like, okay, you know, I gave my army to you to fight the army of the dead. I've taken a great personal hit and loss supporting you. Let's now do what I want to do and siege um, King's Landing immediately. Right, right. And of course, the Stark sisters were like, uh, "Well, you know, we just had this amazing." No, I, I liked. Battle. Yeah, I liked. I liked their point. Yeah, yeah. Can they I thought, rest I they... for a bit and recuperate? They'll fight right, better. Right, right. This is in your interest. And then you see Daenerys. You see Daenerys kind of put her fist down and be like, yeah. "We're gonna go off my rules." Yeah, I thought that was really messed up. And then we also have the scene where Daenerys is talking to John, and she's like, "Hey, um, well, you don't have right to tell afterwards. anyone." But right, they, right. you can see leading up to that, John's just kind of like, yeah, I hear your opinion, and it makes valid sense, but I support my lady. And it's like, whoa, yeah. bro, like strategically, that's not a very He's good trying option. to be neutral. He's, he's trying, trying to be, be but that's not, that's not <clears throat> that's being neutral John, because you know? he's really like, um, he's really turning a blind eye to like the obvious fact that your army is right, have right. to rest and recuperate. Right, right, yeah. Um, but yeah, any other points on that scene? No. Nope. Go to the no, okay. Yeah. So then we have the then we have the scene right where <clears throat> uh, he's telling Daenerys like they they kiss for a second and he's like, whoa, we can't really do this. You can tell he wants to, but then he's like, whoa, we can't because you know who we are. Right. So then it's kind of an awkward scene and she kind of tells him like, hey, like just keep it a secret and he's very torn. Right. And you can tell this is another foreshadowing that she feels scared from the previous scene we talked about. And she's losing it. Yeah, and she's trying to be like, well, I can try and control him. I don't know if she's trying to control him. Oh, she's I, controlling but I feel him. Like, I feel like she's scared. At the very least, she's scared of what could happen. Oh, for sure. She knows. Yeah, and she, she has every right to be. But she's definitely manipulating yeah. him because he asks her, you know, he he's pleads to her. You know, at the very least, I owe my sister's truth. And we yeah. can make this work. And she's like... Oh, don't worry. We can make we can make this work, just as yeah, I've outlined. Just do it. what I said. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like oh. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> All right. So the next scene after that would be with uh, John um, <laughs> spilling the beans. Yes. Want to talk on that? Uh oh boy. Um. So yeah, I feel like John. <laughs> John basically told Sansa and Arya that he what his lineage is and he's like well you gotta swear never to tell anyone and of course that doesn't happen they they definitely Sansa spills the beans almost immediately to Tyrion or so we suspect they don't actually show it but you know you suspect that that's what happens right. and so that that kind of shows that <sighs> you don't know what's on. gonna happen after that I mean I, I imagine they have some <laughs> form of elementary school in Winterfell and we all know that's elementary 101 you don't tell a yeah. secret to somebody and expect it to remain a secret I know so that's going to lead to a lot of drama. So then shortly after that scene, we have a very fantastic and very pleasing surprise entrance by Bronn. She just apparently just marching into Winterfell like it's no one's business. There's no armies. No, no one saw him. Uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> like, he just shows dude. up in there with a fucking bow. Yeah. He's bow caster, or whatever you want to call <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what's yeah. up, boys? <laughs> you got yeah, me yeah. money. Come yeah. on, baby. <laughs> you know, like... What's my money, eh? So yeah, Bronn, um, basically, you know, he... He intercepts um, Jamie and uh, Tyrion in a discussion, a heartfelt mm-hmm. discussion, and yeah. basically lays on them. Hey, Cersei hired me to kill you. Uh, what's your price? And uh, the price is the what was it? Uh, he canceled. wants Highgarden. Highgarden. Ooh, yeah. Ultimately, yeah. that's what they offer him is Highgarden. Right. So he recants his uh, his mission to kill them upon promise of being given Highgarden after the war is over. Now, I did not like this scene for one reason. I always knew Bronn was a, a hired gun. 
But I always felt like he had a camaraderie and a sense of a loyalty to these two Lannister brothers because they have, of course, endured many battles together. Yeah, they've been together, I think, the whole show. Right. They spent all their time together, one way or another. Yeah. He just felt very conniving, very evil, very calculated in the scene, and I don't feel like it was very representative of his character unless we're being misdirected by the directors to think otherwise of him to eventually have him, you know, kind of have a redemption yeah. arc. To be honest, not even a lot happens. He comes in, he's like, hey... I need something. Yeah. All right, here you go. Okay, right. see you guys. Peace. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So then after that, we have um, uh, the very titular scene with Jamie and Brienne finally hooking up. Oh, yeah. finally. Ooh. It is great. And yeah, I don't know how I felt about that, honestly. Because, Me neither. Yeah, like I felt like their love, for lack of a better word, was uh -huh. more of like a reciprocated honor amongst knights. You yeah, know, and they respected it. It was, it, yeah. Right? And then it just, I felt like yeah. the whole sex scene kind of cheapened it. Especially yeah. by the fact that when Jamie leaves, he's just like, yeah, you know, hey, <laughs> thanks for the bone, babe, but uh, I ain't so good. You know, I got to peace out of here. And it's just like, pretty what? much. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. yeah. And of course, that kind of uh, lackluster exit from Winterfell was followed by John leaving Winterfell um, mm -hmm. on the march to King's Landing. And he sees the direwolf um, ghosts. And it's just like, he gives it a quick little look and a little nod and like, all right. I know. I was like, like dude, what about ghosts? What, what are you on. doing, dude? Any dog owner knows you're going to be all up on that. Oh, boy, I love you. Oh, I love know. pup. You know, like getting the You know what? <laughs> yeah, I yeah. guess the CGI budget for HBO couldn't account for that. So yeah, I think that's what was going on. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, Whew, that was a lot. Yeah. So then we have the very tragic scene of the death of Rhaegal, which was oh very, it, it just happens. You see Rhaegal, he's like flying. He's like, oh, is it? Is Daenerys looking at him like, oh, I can fly again. Oh, it's so cute. He's recovering. And then he gets skewered like four times. Oh. And yeah, dude, that was that was, was like, hard to watch because it was so unexpected. Yeah. I was like, oh wow, yeah. Jesus Christ, guys! But it's Game of Thrones, so I'm kind of like, well, that makes sense. Right. So and uh, what's his name? Euron. Euron Greyjoy. Yeah. He was like loving. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. As he traditionally He's always loving. is. Yeah. Right. 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 <clears throat> yeah, so very very sad. I'm very sad yeah. by that. I don't recall if this scene followed after that, if it was before that, but we had a very, um, a very intimate moment between uh, Tyrion mm. and Varys, right? Um, ultimately discussing, which is pretty discussing something that is pretty much borderline treason. Varys is questioning his loyalty <laughs> to mm -hmm. Daenerys. He's realizing the kinks in the armor of her, of her valor and her. Uh, I, sorry, I was gonna say I think this this connects with what I was saying earlier, this is the foreshadowing, I think. This is another piece to the puzzle of the foreshadowing of what is ultimately going to have to happen with Daenerys and, and John, you know, and John yeah. as well. I feel like their, their destinies are intertwined now. I know, I know. And I felt that way initially, like, ooh, Daenerys is kind of losing it. She's kind of resembling something of a uh, mad queen. But on the same token, like, it's like, they, uh, Varys and Tyrion made a pledge to support her and to guide her. And you just can't bail on that, despite the fact that she's obviously making a turn. You said Varys did? Var yeah, Varys and Tyrion. You know, they're her advisors. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I know Tyrion is loyal, but Varys has always been about the realm. The realm. The realm. Yeah. The realm, the good of the realm. You know, he's always been that guy, so I'm not that surprised. Of course. That he's, and, and, and he has made that explicit to um, Daenerys. Oh, oh, yeah. But still, he yeah. is serving right. on her council, and that's his job to guide her. And right. to just bail her at the first or couple, uh, a couple um, missteps towards evil... Yeah. I feel like it's just like it's just like jumping ship, like too yeah. quick almost. You know? I agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyhow, they um, ultimately end up at the the gates of King's Landing. We have the very armies. tense scene. Yeah. Very for me, I was like palms are sweaty, mom's spaghetti, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> and yeah, we have uh, Cersei. Um, uh, after that battle, after Rhaegal was shot down dead by Euron, and um, right, you're still recovering. From that. Yeah, apparently all the ships were damaged, and uh, Tyrion jumped board, and I imagine most of the crew did so as well. We didn't really see it, so I'm not too clear on like what happened and how Masande was captured. Yeah, I felt the same way. I'm like, wait, what? everyone made it to shore, and Masande just floated off to their boats. I don't. Right. Didn't make it didn't sense. Didn't make but... sense, and it didn't help that they did not show it. So, <laughs> right, yeah, points off for that. But yeah. anyways, Masandre is up there at the top of the castle, at the entrance of King's Landing, facing the armies of Daenerys Targaryen, 
And what do we have but an ultimate showdown between uh, Kyburn and um, Tyrion? A little tit for tat, you know. Hey, I'm, right. I'm my queen wants this, your queen wants that. Let's, you know, bend the knee essentially. No, you bend the knee. Okay, we're at a stalemate. Um, and guess what? Uh, yeah, Cersei is just like, yeah. yeah, you know what? I'm not playing this game. Whack off with her head, and down comes Masandri's head. So now we have Daenerys Targaryen losing the Dothraki, losing the Unsullied, losing her most trusted advisor. And now she is pissed. You can see it on her face. So is what's his name? Uh, so is uh, Grey Worm. Grey Worm, you can tell he oh, felt that one, man. and he's going to come back very angry. Right. <clears throat> so, um, and of course, uh, Misandre's last words uh, were Dracarys. Mm -hmm. Burn these motherfuckers down. Yeah. So great, great. I love it. Some heat. Those, those were the first words that she uttered when uh, she was freed. I thought that was great. True. So it's like the final word that she speaks when she dies, you know? Comes full circle, yeah. Yep. So that uh, that is a close of this episode. I'm very, very excited for what follows. How about you? Yeah, no, I'm super excited. Like, I feel like they're setting us up to predict what's coming, but then they're going to be like, just kidding, 180. Yeah, so I feel that too. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Indeed we shall. So um, what would you give this uh, episode of Game of Thrones, Season 8, Episode 4? I have to give this one a 4.5. It was pretty good. I liked it a lot. I'm going to give it a 4.5 nice too. Yeah, it's a pretty Pop solid fresh. episode. Loved it. Yeah, especially after the last one. Nice recovery. Yeah. Good yeah. job, GOT. <laughs> Hats <laughs> off to you, mate. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that wraps it up here for us today on Movie Pop. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please make sure to follow us on Instagram at Movie Pop Official and now on Twitter at Real Movie Pop. <laughs> on Facebook at Movie Pop, and our website, moviepop.org. And don't forget to do the usual, guys. You know, I hate saying this stuff, but it helps us a lot. Like, subscribe, and, you know, the more you like, the creeper DJ gets. I've told you this before, so, I mean, <laughs> you got to do it. Any comments you leave us, any support you give us, it's super appreciated. Me and DJ, seriously, it helps us a lot, and we appreciate the views you give us, the likes you give us. It, it It's a big deal to us, so really appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank Please you so do. much. Thank you, guys.